All right, good afternoon, guys. Can we start? How do I say lunch is now supper? What is? Did you finish lunch? Supping la. Ah, supping la. Okay, sir. Yes, thank you. You finish, sir. Not yet, huh? Okay, we have a. <coughs> okay, guys. Let us begin. So before the break, uh, what about you guys? What is that? Malayalam is very difficult, huh? Kari cho, correct. Kari cho, kai cho. Uh, see that Z I is I. How you are from Malayalam? You are Mal what is how do you say it? Kai cho. Uh, okay, kai cho, correct. Malayalam is considered to be one of the toughest languages, right? But the movies are good though. We watch a lot of Tamil and Malayalam movies, though I don't understand. But I watch it. I like this guy in uh, Tamil. No, not the or not the actual heroes, but the real good actor. Not not that the others are not ba are bad actors, but uh, this guy man is Makkal Selvan. What's his name? Brilliant Vijay Sethupadi. Brilliant actor. Don't you agree? Yes, amazing. I watched all his movies. Super Deluxe, ninety ninety six, no, ninety six. Everything. Brilliant. I have not watched the recent movie though. Apparently, it's not good. Master is just uh, not good. He came to Masala. Correct. Masala movies he shouldn't do. Malayalam to don't ask. Two biggies are there now. Mohan Lal and uh, Mamuti. Can't touch them. Yes. <coughs> All right, guys. So. Moving ahead, what did we do? Huh? We did this ordinary resolution, special resolution done. Then ordinary business, special business uh, is what we need to see. Uh, anyway, we have done the basics here to understand the, uh, what do you say? These are the points, the other points. That appointment of director, removal of director, appointment of auditor, removal of auditor would need. What resolution we'll see later, yes. Hundred percent meeting. If notice is not given, it will invalidate the proceedings. Both board meeting and ordinary meeting. By mistake, no. By mistake, you have one zero one four. We will see that in board meetings chapter, right? One zero one four. If you see, it says accidental omission will not invalidate the meeting. Huh? Like for example, I had to send it to X Y Z A to Z X Y Z. I missed out. And later I come to know the guys who are named X, Y, Z, Xavier, Yamini, Zabiola, let me name them. Three fellows, they have 49% shareholding. So it appears that intentionally I didn't send the notice to them. Will it invalidate? Yes. So here the crux of the issue is what was the intention? Whether was it intentional or unintentional? That has to be proven by the person obviously who is uh, suing. And of course the company has to defend the same, saying that it was not intentional. No, for shareholders meeting, board meeting is different. So when we go to board meeting, there's a chart which we'll do omission. Okay, that also they asked in the exam. They have asked all these questions. No exception. All companies. One zero one applies to all companies. Everybody has to give. Even uh, what do you say? Only thing is where meeting only is exempt. For example, OPC. In one person company, what you will meet yourself. Correct. You're going. You'll say I'll go to coffee day. Why to meet myself? No, it sounds. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's understandable if you are you know seeking yourself and all that spiritual thing. But you can't have an OPC where you meet yourself, right? So OPC notice will not apply. Why? There's no concept of AGM. There's no concept of board meeting. Can OPC have more than one director? Ah, for those meetings it will apply. Yeah. For that you have to see 173. When we go to meetings, <coughs> I will interconnect general meeting. All right. So coming to the ordinary business and uh, special business. Great. Uh, yeah, ordinary notice and special notice. Uh, we will see. Okay. Ordinary business and special business. Tell me, guys. Those four points which are given in one zero two two a. So if I go to one zero two two a, those four points are called as ordinary business. What are those four points? Now this one. 
financial statement that is accounts dividend director and remuneration uh, remuneration and appointment of auditors these four are called as ordinary business remaining are uh, now one question is if i appoint director at an extraordinary general meeting is it ordinary or special if i appoint director only but in an extraordinary general meeting anything in egm is special okay so even even the dada points in egm are special then yes very simple so when anyone asks you what is ordinary business if we just stick to this four point it's wrong these four points happening at the agm is ordinary because the wordings are all businesses are deemed special other than means these four happening at the agm are ordinary so i would say very simple the adda points the adda points happening at agm the adda points happening at agm are ordinary then what are special what would be special i'll just write here the ordinary business is adda points happening at the agm that's okay that is ordinary then what is special the same adda points if it happens at egm it will be special and other than adda points if it happens at egm that is special and one more thing interestingly if i go for approval for amalgamation at agm ordinary or special appointment of sorry uh, merger amalgamation merger at agm special so if i do other than adda at agm that is also special so basically everything in egm that dialogue that she said is correct everything in egm is special that is given here only in 102 again guys i repeat for one or two days forget about section numbers just go by the concept in case of any other meeting all businesses shall be deemed to be special so everything in egm is special you are right everything in egm is special so in egm everything is special anyway but even other than adda at egm also will be special because the only thing which is special is what those four points at egm only those four points only at the egm those four points only at egm is ordinary everything else is special done so those are the two types of businesses it is not linked in any way buddies this uh, special business is not linked to special resolution nothing like that it's all different now coming to notice special notice we will see later with 160 ordinary notice we will see <coughs> so in ordinary notice there is only one dialogue it should be given 21 clear days before the meeting correct 21 clear days the beauty is the word clear itself is not clear what do you mean by clear days should i exclude the sundays a ah, day that you are sending and receiving should be excluded why again see the word clear i cannot use the interpretation of statutes litra legis i cannot use can i literally construct the word clear no it is unclear so how will i construct the word clear i have to use the help of one more interpretation of statute and that is called reasonable construction these statutes we really need to know we need to know the law as far as statute is concerned there are various uh sources of law one of course is the legislature whatever law that we have one is called judicial precedent for example after the nirbhaya rape case the court said that there is a need to ensure that even minors are treated as majors in he in his crimes so anything above 16 years and who is part of the a heinous crime will be tried as a major so that is one more part 
judicial president and there were a lot of rapes etc happening in delhi so what they did was all the vehicles should not have this tinted glass 100% tinted glass should not be there so that rule also was imposed by supreme court and it eventually became a law so that is called judicial president third one is a very very thing very very uh, important thing which is actually there among all other countries in india i want to go to a temple today can i walk in slippers inside the priest will say get out can i ask him why show me the law can i ask him show me temple hindu temple within bracket removal of slippers act 2020 there is nothing like that but he will say get out i have to follow some churches allow slippers some churches don't allow slippers uh, kj yesudas is a very very famous singer right and uh, he has sung so many uh, albums for the deity in uh, guruvayur temple his only one wish he says before i die is to enter the sanctum sanctorum where the deity is kept he wants to go but the priest association there says no why because he is a christian now tell me is there any law no so the thing is third most important thing in our country is our customs and customs whether we like it or not is the law so why we should not go in the temple without slippers or with slippers without slippers wherever or why we should do certain things should not do certain things is dictated by customs and uh, unfortunately or fortunately that is the law and we need to follow that so that is one more part of the entire discussion so customs also will form a major part of the law this is the so these are the sources of the statute so in that the person who is framing the law is the legislature the person who is executing it obviously is the executive that is you your we have our ias ips officers and the third one where they pass judgment or interpret the law is the judiciary judiciary does not frame any laws mind you they only interpret the law and we are at the center chartered accountants company secretaries cmas we are at the center because we are the conduit between the ordinary people when i say ordinary who do not have the legal language they do not know the legal language and between the judiciary they will come to you and they'll ask you sir can you please tell me madam can you please tell me what it means so for us we need to understand this interpretation of statute interpretation of statute is a subject for the judiciary if you are studying law one entire subject ios you have 400 marks but why should we as ca study because obviously instead of reaching the judiciary they'll first come to us and say whether it is correct or not so that is the thing when i say reasonable construction i am using some common sense when there is faulty draftsmanship it's faulty the way they have written clear days means what you should clearly explain when there is faulty draftsmanship the elements of common sense comes into play and common sense what does it suggest today if i want to send a notice i can send at 1 2 3 4 o'clock 5 o'clock 10 am also so should i count today or should i exclude today when i say 21 clear days should i count today or exclude today exclude today and when i say before the meeting meeting is at 10 am so before the meeting is it 9:59 or one day before right one day before so basically if it is 21 days if i should actually add two days to it as you said date of the meeting and date of sending and let's assume i am sending via post section 20 says if it sending via post postal transit time is deemed to be 48 hours so whenever i say 21 days whether i use the word clear or not from today it should be 21 plus 2 plus 2 if it is via post tell me if it is via email is it plus 2 plus 2 or only plus 2 only plus 2 so here section 20 will be applicable only if there is post it will not be applicable if post is not there so i give effect to both the sections sometimes section 20 then i'll not give effect to section 20 i harmonize that brings me to one more interpretation of statute harmonious construction a better example would be agm which we'll see later so harmonious means in harmony we need to see all the sections in harmony 
Section 20 always doesn't say 48. It only says only if it's via post. Uh, if it's via email, then no 48 and all. Correct? Directly it will come. So that is about it. So one is 48, one is... So basically if it's a mail, that is 21 plus 2. If it is, uh, what do you say, via post, then 21 plus 2 plus 2. Everywhere, even when I say uh, board meeting notice 7 days, I should automatically do 7 plus 2 plus 2. Even in, you know, everywhere for that matter, in Companies Act, wherever it is 21 days, 14 days, it should be read as 14 plus 2 plus 2. That's common sense. So, that's how it works. That is ordinary notice. Special notice, we will see when we do 160, then you'll understand in a better way. So this forms all the basics with respect to business resolution notices. So, that's all. I mean, that, that's how it is. Now, anyway, you know the types of companies. We can quickly see. And when I use the word member, who is a member, guys? Who is a member? Is it equity shareholder? Is shareholder a member or member a shareholder? We have seen, we are seeing many times we will be seeing the word member. So, we shouldn't get confused. Are all shareholders members? Are all shareholders members? Okay. So, my great grandfather had shares of Infosys. He is a member and shareholder. Today he died. In the will, I have bequeathed this entire property of shares, 1 lakh shares. It has been transmitted to me. I am actually the holder of the shares. But in the register, his name is there still because it's still not changed. I am a shareholder but not a member. So, are all shareholders members? Did you get my point? As of today, I am a shareholder but I am not a member. Still, they have not changed the name there. What do you think? Whosoever name is there in the register, is it an, is he a member? Is it like that? Then in that case, today morning I buy shares of Infosys in the stock market. And throughout the day, it has passed through so many people and some hundred person gets the share in the end. At the end of the day, who is the shareholder and who is the member? Hundred percent is a shareholder. Who is the member? Will my name be entered in the register? Have you ever wondered that? Will my name be entered in the register? That is why it is pertinent to note the definition of member. Always. One definitely is, okay, what about the subscribers to memorandum? Are they the members? Subscribers to memorandum. They are, the, are they the members? Subscribers to memorandum. So, if you see section 2, uh, it is already there. Yeah, 255. Member in relation to a company means, first of all, subscriber to memorandum. Who shall be deemed to have agreed to become member. When he's signing only, has agreed that he'll become a member and upon registration, he becomes a member. Every other person who agrees in writing to become a member, this is in the initial public offer. It will be allotted in your name. Third one, stock market shares are always held in the name of NSDL or CDSL. They are called as the depositories. In Infosys books, whose name is there? Not my name, your name. NSDL, CDSL. And they have a network of banks which can open something called as DMAT account. And these banks are called as DP, Depository Participant. And all of us are shareholders because we are having DMAT account. So whether 1%, 1000%, 40,000% it goes, doesn't matter. Ultimately, the main shareholder is NSDL. But he is not a shareholder, he is a member. Who is a shareholder? That's why the wordings are very superb here. If you see, every person holding shares of the company, that is 100 person, and whose name is entered as a beneficial owner in the records of the depository, will be called as a member also, shareholder also. By transmission, I may be member, shareholder. If I'm a company limited by guarantee, I will be a member, but never a shareholder. Though it can be used interchangeably, but especially in your cluster number 6, which talks about, you know, the investigation, inspection, operation, mismanagement, etc. It becomes essential for us to write the exact words. Rather than member, shareholders, we cannot write members. Likewise, we cannot reverse it. Operation, mismanagement, because if you see class action suit, 
this chart book will be given to you guys it's on the way uh, anyway you don't need it now honestly only when we reach cluster 6 we need but i'm just showing you for your information oppression and oppression and mismanagement for that matter if you see it clearly says there members everywhere it says member some case it says member so it's very important for us here we can't write shareholders we lose marks we have we have to write the word members so i told you already know the answers it's just the crash course is to understand where we are going wrong it's a complete refresher course as to where we are going wrong and potentially how we can manage wherever we are going wrong so that's the scene that is about member aomo and all those things you know now what is a uh, private company then what are the three elements in a private company which are always there and what's the difference between private and public company apart from the names public company is limited private company is private limited. apart from that shares are not transferable is it dash restricted prohibited limited that is the most important keyword restricted prohibited limited ah, now doubt will arise correct that's the thing restricted limited limited trunk says shares issue and transfer restricted prohibited limited Right? So, these are the words that a evaluator will look for. You know the answer, I know you know, but you don't know which word. That's the problem. So, it is RLP points. Restrict the right to transfer shares, limits the number of people to 200, prohibits the issue of shares. When I say issue of shares to the public, not to others, I can issue to many people, no? to the public. Restrict the right to transfer the shares. It is not freely transferable. That's all. What is freely transferable then? Public company, it is freely transferable. So today I can buy a public company share just like that. Okay, coming to listed. What do you mean by listed? Can a private company shares be listed? No. Many places in the new Companies Act, Companies Amendment Act has amended listed company to listed public company. Why? In many places in the am Companies Amendment Act, they have amended listed company to listed public company. Why? These are small, small changes that have come. Why? Asiyar? Listed public company. In the old law, sorry. Before 7 5 2018, it was listed company. You answered. Who answered? Ah, tell me. Yes, perfect. Now, if you see listed companies, again, definition will give us the answer, guys. Again, don't bother about what all I'm interconnecting. Really doesn't matter. Just I'm wanting to tell you that where we are going wrong. If I just say listed company, oh, L comes before P. No, first alphabetical order will come A, B, C, D, A, or L. It's alphabetical order generally. H, I, J, K, L. I see listed company, 252. Means a company which has any of its shares listed? Securities. What are securities? As for SCRA, Security Contract Regulation Act. Equity share, preference share, debentures, mutual funds, ADR, GDR, all these things. So, can a private company list its debentures 100% yes? Are the shares freely transferable? Still no. Are debentures freely transferable? Yes, debentures can be. I mean, obviously, somebody issues debentures, company issues, and they subscribe for it. No. So, if you see, again, coming back to our concept, Listed public company is different from listed company. Listed public company is a public company where the securities are listed. Listed company can be a private also. So accordingly, we need to write that properly. Right? Now, public companies other than uh, private companies, that's okay. Then what is OPC? OPC is private company, public company. 
full doubt. IPC is private company, public company. See, basically for public company should have minimum 7. Private company should have minimum 2. OPC satisfies neither. It is one person company. So is it a private or public? Or can it be both? If you see the definition of uh, one person company, 262. What an amazing definition. They will all be coming together. Much of a deadly definition you have to hold today. One person company means what? It says one person as member. Whereas in, where have they, means a company. Okay, coming to a company. Again, forget about the interconnections. I am just talking the concept. Is foreign company a company? Is foreign company a company? What do you think? So, is foreign company actually a company? Okay, so one answer I got. If you see company definition 2 clause 20, what is com simple company definition 2 clause 20? It says, company means a company incorporated under this act. Means, Companies Act 2013 or under previous company law. Is foreign company ever incorporated in India? No. So, is foreign company a company? No. I mean, is foreign company a company? No. Because a company means a company incorporated under this act. Correct, no? So, what is foreign company then? As you rightly said, body corporate. 2 clause 11. Body corporate includes a company incorporated outside India. Got it? So, a foreign company, so what it seems is not what it is actually. Peter England, Indian company it is. Tirupur, there is factory. Correct, Peter England. Hindustan Unilever, nothing Hindustan about it. Correct, so if you see, that's what it is. It's just the name, right? So, British East India Company. There was nothing India about it, right? So, if you see, that's what I'm trying to tell. They, just using that name, they did the entire thing. But does not include. So, basically, corporation includes a company incorporated outside India. Outside India is the key. So, a foreign company is not a company. A foreign company is a body corporate. Similarly, one person company here coming back, it says means a company. In the recent budget, they have changed all these things. Let us not discuss any of that and confuse. You are only sitting here for the examination. One person means a company which has only one person as a member. But can more than one person be a director? Yes. You still haven't answered. Private company, public company. Can OPC be a public company? What do you think? So, in the definition, it is not there. You will not find it in the definition. You will find it here. One person, where the company is to be formed as a one person company, that is to say, private company. If this line was not there, gone. Can I start a company with illegal purpose? Smuggling. Why? You should ask why for everything. Why? We are upon private limited. Smuggling. What do you think? Legal object. Where is it? Actually, yeah, it is given. See here. Lawful purpose. Every word matters in law. Lawful purpose. If you see income tax act doesn't care, wherever you are getting money, you give tax. I don't care. Correct? Income tax, nothing. Income should be lawful income, nothing like that. Correct? So, wherever you are earning, pay. But your lawful purpose. Can I still actually create an illegal, I mean, company with illegal objects and get away with it? For example, what I am saying is, see, a company may be formed for any lawful purpose. Can I interpret as company may also be formed for illegal purpose? No. Are you getting? When I use the word may, it's always discretionary. 
when I use the word shall, it is always mandatory. But there are some cases where reverse will happen. Here, can I interpret may to be may? No. Are you getting my point? Slowly, when you are reading, you will come to know. Again, do not worry about section numbers. I am just talking about the concept. How, because of the context, law changes. Lawful purpose? Yeah. Tell me, madam. Huh. This is, for example, please get out. Like that, if I tell. Is it an order or request? But I use the word please. Huh. Same law is also telling. But law cannot read, no. Correct. While reading, that is why we need chartered accountants, company secretaries, CMA, lawyer to read what the lawmaker intended. As simple as that. When I am saying may, it is common courtesy. When I say please get out or please sit down, please has no value. It is an order. Here also they are ordering, but they are using some courtesy. Please get out. Right? Courtesy. The beauty about it is you guys. Six months later, client is sitting in front of you and asking these questions. I am not joking. What will you tell? So this one question, don't ask. I left it in choice in the exam. We can't tell that. Then that question, second question will come. How did you become CA? Right? So that is why Bayer Act method is important. Now in this 10 days, whatever is possible, I will tell you. After that, you will only will figure out. I can assure you that. It's the context. If somewhere else, if I use the word may. One second. If somewhere else. Yeah. If somewhere else I use the word may. Then it will be discretionary. If somewhere else I use the word shall, it will be mandatory. But in some cases, we have to reverse it. So this is one such example. Like that, many examples will give. Forget about the section numbers. But here you see, it is a private company. You know the answer, it is private. You don't know where it is. That's all. It's fine. That is why we are here to help. So this is a private company, one person company. Then what is a small company? Lot of discussion during this budget. Small, You would have heard. But let's not see any change here, changes. What is a small company according to you? Yes, the very simple. For our examination purposes, small company, you just don't see all these things. Things have changed. For our examination purposes, the paid up capital is less than or equal to 50 lakhs. Anyway, it's not notified, so it's okay. So paid up capital less than or equal to 50 lakh. This is the old provision still existing for the exam. Plus turnover less than or equal to 2 CR. Can you believe it or not? This was or before in the law. It was or. Before it was or. What is the dangerous thing here? Any company with paid up capital 10 lakhs but turnover 200 crore called itself small. Then they said, no, 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 this is not or, or should be read as and. And they changed the law also to and. So to irritate you in the exam, they'll say, you know, X limited paid up capital exactly equal to 50 lakhs and turnover exactly equal to 2 crore. Small company or not small company? Small company. Why? Less than, less than, wrong answer. What you missed out is this. Again, one more mistake that we make. You didn't understand your mistake. Or we'll, we'll see. I know you didn't understand why you made a mistake. See this? Small company means a company other than public company. Means small company should be a private company. Are you getting my point? Here, what did I tell? Paid up capital, 50 lakh exact. Turnover, 2 crore exact. I don't care. It's a public company. For all I care, paid up capital, 1 rupee. Turnover, 0. It's never a small company. So, this is one place where we miss out in the exam. Guarantee. We'll never see which type of company they have asked in the exam. Correct? That's the problem.
So first step that we need to see in the exam is what company they are asking. Then this, this is like a red herring. They will divert your attention here, but the real crux is here. So what type of company is what you need to see. So paid up capital less than or equal to 50 lakhs. Turnover less than or equal to 2 CR. Is these are the things that we need to see. Anyway, these are all the types of companies. Going forward, we'll see more. That is basic. Private company, public company, all that is, uh, that is enough. That's okay. The same. You can do more in the best. And this will be done later when we do uh, section 165. Done. With all these basics in mind and the initial things that we saw that director is an agent, director is everything. We have seen who is more powerful. We have seen the board. Before the com director comes into the company, first thing that I need to see is whether he is qualified or disqualified. So basically, if a director is entering the company here, at this juncture, I need to see whether he is qualified or disqualified. And that section, will starting with cluster 1, that section is 164, disqualification. After he enters, after he enters, after he enters, I need not see 164 at all. After he enters, what should I see? 164 will not at all come. After he enters, I should see other sections. That is 167, vacation. Then I can, he can resign if he wants to. That is 168, resignation. He can be thrown out, 169, removal. He will have to rotate in the sense he will have to, uh, some people will uh, retire by rotation, some people don't. Rotation, 152.6. It is not interchangeable. Disqualification is different from vacation, different from rotation, different from resignation, different from removal. It cannot be interchanged in any way. It would be wrong if we interchange it. So when I am writing in the exam, I should say disqualification is 164 only. Vacation is 167. If a director leaves the company, English word, will he vacate office? English, normal English. Has he vacated his office? Yes, he has vacated his office, definitely. But can I use that word vacation here? No. Because when I use the word vacation, it is under 167 specifically. When he is entering the company, it is disqualification. After he enters, it is vacation under 167. Rotation uh, is 152.6, resignation 168, removal 169. They are very, very clear. Right? Tell me. That's absolutely okay. No problem. Huh, but there are certain things where you cannot. For example, 152 for that matter. Okay, you can write that. But preferably you should write the subsection. If you don't remember, it's okay. You can write 152. No problem. You can definitely write 152. Absolutely no problem. 152. One is first director. Right, 1 to 6 is rotation. So in case you can't remember, it's okay. Let's say 1 to 2 also you don't remember. It's fine. You can simply write as per the provisions of Companies Act. But the problem with this, confidently we'll write the wrong one. We'll write 142 and come and tell 100% is 142. That's the issue. That's the problem that we are facing. It's okay. Please don't write the wrong section number, guys. I already showed you the paper, what will happen. So the right section number. Or 152 on also is okay. If you don't remember the subsection 6, it's fine. So, words cannot be interchanged. Each of these things is different. So, we need to see different, uh, different things. It's different. So, 
this only begins at the entrance after he enters this will no longer come then we have other things 167 152 6 168 169 so let's go into disqualification at the point of entry only this one so anyway wherever it's important i have given the bear act extract otherwise you can see the bear act anyway so this is provided to you in the book itself becomes easy for you also to interpret my opinion it's easy online slept off no response easy for them no they'll be in the blanket and in this afternoon session when your eyes are closing remember see a results dot nic dot in fil automatically get up oh, they are here yes all right so one by one 164 one a person now this person is what income tax person or individual individual why we know directors have to be individual correct a person shall not be eligible for appointment as a director of a company whenever law is silent doesn't talk about anything a director means any director a company means any company if law has to give exemptions it is given in section 462 even for mca to give exemptions power has to be given in the act Act under 462 has given power to MCA to grant exemptions. And under 469, they have granted power to prescribe rules. If these two sections were not there, MCA also could not have done anything. MCA is also inferior to the Act, though MCA created the Act, the legislature. Parliament created the law. But Parliament is not above the law. Nobody is above the law. So there are two sections given to the ministry to change the law or not change the law sorry give exemptions change the law no power is given change the law only amendment only right 462 and 469 rules so they can say okay a company does not include private a company does not include section 8 companies it's their choice otherwise when i whenever i say a company it is for all companies put together he is of unsound mind, he is undischarged insolvent, he has applied. 164 does not apply to women directors, true or false? False. Why? Yes, this is not interpretation of statute, this is GCA, General Clauses Act, section number 13 says masculine includes feminine. Masculine includes feminine. So, wherever there is the uh, masculine gender it also includes the feminine gender so definitely it is included section 13 of the general clauses act very much applicable without a doubt so he includes she anyway so let's just read quickly two three and then we'll see the other things first he is an unsound is of unsound mind and stands out declared by a competent court so here the keywords only are that unsound mind and competent court. Correct. So unsound mind, mental condition, medical condition, or both. What do you sell for mental uh, fellow in Tamil? What? Paitanna. Pai. Paithiyam, lose, lose, lose only, no, lose, correct. In Kannada it says ucha, in Malayalam what man, full complicated thing you will tell now, easy, huh? Huh? Brandan, okay, Brandan, correct, see, like this. What is, they are telling something and all, V-A-T-T, Vetti, Vattu, okay, what? correct, Vattu, sorry. So, this, uh, you will call your teachers, no, become lecturers, simply they will be shouting. Haven't you called? No. You have not called any of your lecturers? What to? You can call me, no problem. So, if you see, if you declare him to be unsound, is it unsound? No. This is actually a medical condition. Medical plus mental, both. 
ऑफकोर्स मेंटल लेट्स आई मेडिकल यू नीड टू टेक अ व्हाट इज अ सर्टिफिकेट फ्रॉम द डॉक्टर दैट ही इज अनसाउंड माइंड बेसिकली एनी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद द कंपनी if the director does that consent that he gives is a contract and we know competence to enter into a contract three people cannot enter one minor second unsound mind third who is not dis who is actually disqualified by law so anyway it's already there con contracted why is it given here have you ever wondered there is no need to give only no if you are unsound obviously will not be taken first of all if you are unsound will you be even capable of being a director ever no then why this point is given sir law maker also was one what turn no lose no right so it is very simple guys it's because of there are they have analyzed almost uh, 70 to 80% of people who have high iq and eq they end up becoming unsound that's the analysis that they have done i thought all this simply stories they are telling when it happened in my own family my mom's cousin uh, cousin's husband second cousin's husband actually so he was a brilliant doctor in the netherlands so he was the considered to be world's second pain relief surgeon or something long time back in 1970s only he had created a local anesthesia which was uh, not there obviously anywhere in the world and uh, he was he showed me a video much much later in 2000 when we were kids that time so he had shown us a video when he was he had opened up the patient aram sir talking to him and doing the operation in 1970s so that guy so that guy wanted to come to india and settle down here so when he came all the big institutions approached him the vocat hospital manipal hospital all these big big groups they wanted apollo they wanted him to be on the board so one day he went to manipal hospital and he forgot why he went there suddenly and one day he comes to my our home i remember very clearly that day 1000 rupees note falling from his pocket i was like uncle what is wrong you come sit there then i went down a trail of 1000 rupee notes up till his car i opened his car 5 lakh rupees is strewn there just like that so he went to the bank didn't know what to do he forgot why he went there simply went and withdrew 5 lakh rupees cash and is kept it in his pocket it was it was some uh, disease is not dementia and all that it's some disease which comes only for one in one crore it seems where the brain cells starts depleting generally brain cells stop here it starts depleting so it's basically becoming a child so i just understood that this guy who is actually sought after by all the big hospitals now has become like this and today unfortunately I mean, I witnessed it, and I had gone to his place in uh, Kurk. Uh, there's a hill station called Kurk in Karnataka. So there, he has a huge house, palace. So there is like morning. I want to go to Mysore. Mysore is some 200 kilometers from there. I want to go. If you say no, he starts throwing things. So I had to take him to Mysore. He had breakfast there. Then he said, I want to go to Bangalore, which is again three hours from there. Why? For lunch. If you don't take it, he'll again start throwing things. his fortuner vehicle he has the petrol bill is 2 lakhs per month obviously if you travel like that every day what will happen so my aunt didn't know what to do so she rented out a house everywhere mysore bangalore in madikeri anyway they had and in middle also they hired many very sad state of affairs they came back to settle down but then this happened so then i saw then two three people you know cheated him of his property also then we went to court it actually happened the court declared him as an unsound person and we transferred all his property to his only daughter who is living in netherlands so we transferred it to her so that time i realized oh that is why this point was given person competent court and competent court should decide you and i cannot decide court means court abroad or in india what do you think court definition is there court definition they have given district court civil court high court supreme court is not there why yes supreme court will never decide on question of fact is my uncle unsound that everybody knows supreme court will no, no need for to waste supreme court's time 
Supreme Court always adjudicates based on a question of law. Shrisha, no doubt it was not Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is very common. If he didn't have Alzheimer's, some weird disease. Yeah. So now today is like a baby. So that time he was shouting. Now he doesn't speak only. Just like a baby. Some 78, 80 years. When you go to him, he just lets out a faint smile. Like a normal baby does, no? You just recognize somebody, the baby smiles like that. Very sad to see him like that. One dynamic guy he was. Few years back. So I witnessed both the sides. So then I realized, this is why this section came into force. Because then I read up why. So in the, some of the, you know, discussions that I was seeing, I saw that apparently 70 to 80 percent of very, very, very high IQ fellows get this. So to protect the companies. Because in the, suddenly in the middle, if it happens, what to do? So that's why they have, and you and I cannot declare guys to be a competent court. Court doesn't include Supreme Court because they only adjudicate based on a question of law. Anything legal, any interpretation issues they will see. Whether my uncle is mad or not, there is no interpretation needed. It's a fact. So that's why Supreme Court is not there. Yes, B and C should be read together. Any doubt in this? So only two cases. Tell Foreign court is not there as per the definition. So foreign court will not be taken into consideration. But nevertheless, practically, if a foreign court also adjudicates you as an insolvent, you will obviously not take that person on board as a director. But court here should be seen only Indian definition. 2 clause 29, foreign court is not there. B and C, undischarged insolvent, applied to be adjudicated as an insolvent and application is pending. You have applied on 10th February to be adjudicated as an insolvent and they accept it, let's say, on 10th March. 10th March 21 to 10th March 24, they call you as a insolvent, undischarged insolvent. For these three years, 21, 22, 23, 24, three years, you are adjudicated as an insolvent. You have applied here. So the day you have applied to the court, that is from 20, 10th February to 10th March, this comes under point number C. He has applied to be adjudicated as an insolvent and application is pending. The court fixes a future date for settlement of your liabilities and it will tag that for the next three years you will not be discharged from the tag of insolvent. That is this part. He is a undischarged insolvent. Point number B. Clause B. Here also clauses and all not needed to remember. Just 164.1 you can remember. Now here it will be a problem if you write 164.2 instead of 164.1. 164.2 is a completely different section. Subsection. It actually should have been a different section only anyway. But you can write 164. No problem. No need to write the subsection number. Don't write the wrong subsection number. It will be a problem. Under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, IBC, can a individual insolvencies, it's uh, not yet made applicable, but if that is applicable, can, if you haven't paid money, can I go apply? I, you, you owe me so much money. Can I go and apply and call you insolvent? Yes. So my friend has gone to the court on 10th February and requested the court to declare me as an insolvent. The court takes up the matter on 10th March. Between 10th February to 10th March, can I become a director? Application is pending. Answer is, yes, I can. Why? He has applied. Have they told he or any other person has applied? No. He has applied means what? Voluntarily, I should have applied. Have I applied voluntarily? No. My friend has applied. My erstwhile friend is no longer a friend now. Enemy. He has gone and applied. Got it? So the key word here is he has applied. 
It doesn't say he or any other person. Small, small word, small, small concepts. So point number one, he only should have applied. Second, application made, application is pending. Third one, court has declared you as an insolvent and they have not discharged you from the tag of insolvent. For three years, you will be insolvent. For three years, you will be called as an insolvent. He is of unsound mind, stands so declared by a competent court and is an undischarged insolvent. He is an undischarged insolvent. It. He or any other person has applied, not given. He or any other person has applied, not given. Next. For the C point. C, C point. He has applied. He or any other person has applied is not there. Only he should have applied. If my friend has applied, then no. For the B point, once I am declared insolvent, then gone. Whoever may have applied. Once I am declared insolvent, then I cannot be. Fourth one. Any doubts here? Again, the keywords are undischarged insolvent, applied, pending. That's it. First one, unsound mind. Stands or declared. I mean, unsound mind and competent court. Now comes the next part. First of all, you should be convicted of an offence. Involving moral turpitude or otherwise. Point number one, point number two, point number three, six months imprisonment minimum. Point number four, five years. We will discuss. Director, prospective director who is coming into the company, it is always seen at the point of entry, appointment. Convicted of an offence involving moral turpitude or otherwise. Question number one, what is moral turpitude? What is moral turpitude? Malified, okay. So, moral turpitude is bad faith. Is it that? Moral turpitude. A person who is anyway in jail for five times for robbery, he comes out and commits one more robbery. Does it shock you? No. Correct. RCB has been winning for so many years. They will win one more year. Does it surprise you? No. Correct. Winning only, man. We win winning. Winning hearts only, nothing else. Yeah. So, yes. So, if you see, I am an RCBN in CSK land. Superb. Yes, I have to balance it now. Yeah. So, if you see, that's the thing. Now, uh, hearts only, correct. Rangesh Badri is right. He is full CSK fan. Yeah. So, only this com recent season, we can say, okay, we are better than you. Only one season. That's all. Yeah. Moral, that anyway will turn in April. We will again be last table. Yeah. So, best way, if I don't want people to tease me, tease yourself. Best thing. Yes. So, convicted of what? Moral turpitude. Now, it doesn't shock. Correct? RCB losing will never shock us. What is moral turpitude, honestly then? Something that shocks the conscience of the entire society. Like for example, if you f find out that Bill Gates, Bill Gates was caught red-handed stealing one parleji biscuit of 5 rupees. That's still a hopeless example, but you'll remember, correct? He is caught stealing red-handed parleji biscuit. Will it shock you? 
of course that's called kleptomania he doesn't have it but that that's a disease called kleptomania it's a disease where you keep on stealing right kleptomania there is this uh, boxer uh, mcgregor rock boxer he is a multimillionaire he was caught stealing his friend's mobile recently he is a multimillionaire he is a billionaire actually he was he stole his friend's mobile think about it it shocks you kleptomania so the thing is is that moral turpitude yes moral turpitude is something that shocks the conscience of a society recently this uh, two people steven smith and uh, the other fellow david warner were banned for one year that was two years ago uh, for ball tampering if you see the icc code of conduct ball tampering is the least offense least of all the offenses in icc but why did why were they banned by australian team australian no uh, oh, sorry board because the number 2 person in australia which the kids look up to number 1 is the prime minister number 2 is the australian cricket captain whoever it is actually that's true they love their sport correct if you see the the number of gold medals that usa australian all bring will come to know they really love their sport and they encourage sports a lot it's a sporting country actually so if you see for them to see their captain fall down from grace like that was really humiliating so the board said you have not maintained the sanctity or the purity of that position that's why i'm going to punish you so for a very small offense they have punished him one year one year peak of his career gone it's good because of moral turpitude so moral turpitude is something that shocks the conscience of a society when ramalinga raju wrote a letter that i committed fraud shocked the entire society when vg siddhartha of coffee day wrote a letter saying that i am a fraud i have committed you know lot of you know misappropriation then he committed suicide that was a shock moral turpitude something that shocks the conscience of a society no suicide is not moral turpitude the act of committing the fraud is moral turpitude vijay malya also did then he aram se went correct that's the thing king of good times so moral turpitude so if you see that is what it is convicted of an offense of moral turpitude so moral turpitude is that only something that shocks so law punishes the body or the mind body five years jail body or the mind mind sure both okay this uh, mcq body mind both a and b yeah what do you think so what does it do so if you see uh, i am walking on the road somebody i'm an article clerk somebody comes and tells your wallet or your life i know in my wallet nothing is there i am an article clerk correct but still my i have one thing self respect i'll say i'll not give you my wallet you do whatever you want he doesn't know that i am karate champion example i'm giving i'm not right so the thing is i hit him in a temple here if you hit him properly actually he can die so when he while doing that self defense all karate i hit him here and he drops down dead have i committed homicide side means killing homi is homo sapien man killing of a human being is homicide have i committed homicide 100% yes is a man dead yes it is homicide then you would have watched these movies you know uh, which actually happen in real life also they are called crimes of passion so the husband walks in or the wife walks in and i mean he finds that the husband is having an affair immediately he'll kill the i will kill whoever is there in the room you have seen it actually happens i'm not kidding you will seen in the movies also is that homicide 100% yes third one like the nirbhaya case carefully planned murder and recent rape case in hyderabad it was carefully planned premeditated cold blooded murder or cold blooded killing of a human being is it also homicide yes ajmal kasab mindlessly killed so many people was that homicide yes multiple homicide who will get the longer sentence 
all have committed homicide. That's why in IPC there is a concept. Homicide amounting to murder. Homicide not amounting to murder. Law punishes the body or the mind. Mind, not the body. They'll, yes, they will only see the intention. That is called mens rea. Mens rea. Criminal intention. Latin term, mens rea. So, here, this mens rea is linked to this word. Okay, one more thing. Let's say, I'll just give an example. Nara and Murthy is arrested on dowry harassment. Just a, I'm, I'm creating that shock value. That's why like, what is this fellow telling? Nara and Murthy is arrested for dowry harassment. Now, after so many years, right, dowry harassment. He is in jail. He wants to become director of, I mean, he's obviously cases are all going on still. Now, he wants to become director of uh, one more company. Can he become? The first thing in prevention of dowry harassment act is the concerned person and whatever in-laws everybody are put to are put in judicial uh, sorry police custody and then till the case is going on he will have to come out go in come out whatever six months over can he become can he become a director answer is yes because he has not been convicted again the key word is this you know what we write in the exam he has committed moral turpitude. He has been charged with moral turpitude. Wrong. We have to use the word convicted. Convicted means proven guilty by the court of law. Proven guilty. Proven guilty by the court of law is called convicted. Right? We cannot use charged. Charged. Committed. All that we cannot do. Sorry? Charged with means he is accused. You have been charged with murder. That is what the FIR will uh, you know, accuse you of. Committed means he has actually done it. Convicted is the next. That is the final, uh, what do you say? Yeah, judgment made by the court. Salman Khan, for example. What is mens rea? Mens rea is, you know, criminal intention. Law always sees the criminal intention. So Salman Khan, you know, was convicted by the court of killing seven people. But the person who saw only then later said he was not there. Fact that seven people died was true. But whether Salman Khan did it or not, was there mensri or not, became a question of law. That's why it went to Supreme Court. Since the people who saw him do it, one fellow died mysteriously, one fellow got cancer and he died. All the six other uh, laborers who saw Salman Khan or his driver, right, they told that, uh, you know, no, no, he was not there. Went to Supreme Court. And Supreme Court, what did they do? They eventually said, because of lack of evidence, Salman Khan is no longer convicted. Did they remove? The higher court can do two things. One, Remove the conviction or reduce the sentence. Both they can do. If you are like Sanjay Dutt for that matter, for him conviction stood and they reduced the sentence on good behavior. I mean some money if you give, good behavior will happen. Right? So good behavior. But Salman Khan was, that conviction only was removed for him. Which means he is not guilty only. Imagine. So conviction removal is different. But in the other case of this uh, uh, shooting the black buck, or the chinkara, chinkara is the uh, state bird of state animal of Rajasthan, and also one of the most sacred animals for the Bishnoi community. So the Bishnoi community worship the chinkara, and this fellow went and shot there only there. He went and hit. That he is still convicted because there people saw there is no question of law there anymore. Correct? It's question of fact. He has killed it. People have seen it. And they will not sell their souls like others. They will say, no way. You have killed our God. So we saw you. We will ensure that you go to jail. That case is still going on. But he's been convicted. He's already appealed against it. That's the thing. So if you see mens rea, 
Men's Riya is one thing that we have to understand. So all these things are linked. Then they'll ask you in the exam, you know, cognizable and non-cognizable. What is that? They have asked three marks question. May 2018. Bailable, non-bailable. Huh? Okay, what is cognizable? Correct, correct. Actually, you're right. Cognizable, non-cognizable. Sorry? Ah, warrant. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yeah, yes. Co cognizable offense, non-cognizable offense. Right? Non-cognizable offense, as you said, you don't need arrest warrant. You can directly, you know, arrest the person. Correct? No tension. But in cognizable, you need a arrest warrant. Cognizable is a bailable offense. And non-cognizable? What is the difference between bailable and non-bailable? That is bailable? Non-bailable, okay. Huh. So which means a bail cannot be granted in non-bailable? Oh, that's okay. Women and children, that's set aside. A bail cannot be granted for non-bailable offenses except that women and children case that you told. Uh -huh. Cognizable is non-bailable, then non-cognizable is bailable. Okay. This they asked in the exam for three marks. So we will discuss this when we do 212. Investigation, cluster 6, 212. It is also there as part of my chart book. Do not worry. We will do it when we see 212 section. So we will see that time. It is there in the miscellaneous portion. No tension. This question they ask for 3 marks. All offenses under Companies Act are non-cognizable. Come in. 3 marks. Right? That is the thing. So, cognizable offence, non-cognizable offence. With warrant, without warrant, we will see. So, that is all linked to that only. There is only one offence which is the dangerous offence under Companies Act. That is under SFIO 212. Serious Fraud Investigation Office. When you reach that stage, we will do it. It is there in my chart book. Do not worry. So, we shall see it. We will do that. Anyway, coming back to this now, first keyword should be convicted, second should be moral turpitude. Otherwise means, so Narayan Murthy is just under trial, but is just put judicial custody, that is not convicted. If you are convicted, if you have convicted somebody, you can reduce the sentence, that is a different issue. But if you have removed the conviction, tomorrow only you can become a director, no problem. Now, otherwise means what? If it was other, if otherwise is other than moral turpitude, then why did I give moral turpitude? That is a valid question. I could have simply said any offence. I could have simply said any offence. If otherwise is other than moral turpitude, why was there a need to give otherwise? I could have simply said any offence. This otherwise is actually only offences under Companies Act only not any other act. This is given in the definition read with the rules. They have given that when they say otherwise than moral, uh, other than moral turpitude, it means Companies Act offence. So, if a director has been convicted under Companies Act offences, can he be reappointed? No. Can he continue his appointment? I need not see 164 because 164 is only at the point of entry. I am seeing later. At the time of reappointment, can he be reappointed? Answer is no, if it is a Companies Act offence. And mind you, imprisonment should be minimum 6 months. Imprisonment must be minimum 6 months. If it is less than 6 months, no problem. Bill Gates was put to jail for 2 days. He can come back and become a director, no problem.
If it is minimum six months, then the next point gets triggered. Yes, five years. So if it is six months, then the next point gets triggered. And what is the next point? Five years. Five years. Now, for example, if I have been convicted in 2016, jailed till 2018, five years. Can I come out and become a director in 2021? Or should I wait till 23? What do you think? 23 or 21? 23, why? Yes, very clearly they have given perfect date of expiry of the sentence. Yeah, tell me. Correct. I'll, I'll explain that. I'll tell that. We'll talk about it right now. One second. So, why we have to see one more point here. From the date of expiry of the sentence. If you see auditor on the other hand, auditor's disqualification. Is it date of expiry or what? If you link this to interlinking section 141. Auditor, what do you think? Because that comes in auditing. Here and there we need to interlink. One forty one three H. Yes. For auditor it is what? Date of conviction. For auditor, it is date of conviction. So if the same question was, let's say, 2016 to 2020, auditor has been convicted, five years. So general rule of what it would have been, five years from the date of expiry of the sentence. For this fellow it is 10 years from the date of conviction. Anyway, it's the same but I'm just saying it will matter if it is a one year and if this was like six years, six plus by all that is not there. That is from the date of conviction. For this guy it is from the from this date. I, do, I don't have to care how many years stayed in jail. Only from this year, the date of conviction I should see how many years. Now coming to his question, which period? Auditor is always five years, no? Always it is one term of five years each, always. You can't appoint him for ten years. Huh. Huh, then fine, then it will not come. In the date of conviction, you have to wait till that prison sentence is over. Right. Now his question was, uh, he has been convicted, three, four scenarios I will give. Six months over already. I mean, six months, more than six months. It was nine months. But then on good behavior, he came out. Bail. Is bail or all, one more word for bail is for low. Not bail exactly, for parole. There are two things. You are already in jail, then you come out because of some emergency. Emergency actually will mean closed one's death. But in India, emergency means wife's birthday party. Right? I'll come out. Sanjay that came out now. He said, wife, emergency. She's in hospital. Tomorrow, next day, he was shot in the some club enjoying with his wife. So if you see, that's the thing. Parlo or parole is you're already in jail, but you come out. Bail is you are in judicial custody and the case is still going on. Then you come out after that when the case is still going, like Salman Khan case. And you are convicted and jailed also, then also you can come out on bail. There are various provisions in various laws to understand. Bail, furlough, parole, all that are part of your sentence. If I have come out on bail, furlough, parole, it means I am serving my sentence. That's the best part. So no problem. 
Got it? So if you come out on furlough, parole, bail, it's your, you're actually doing the sentence anyway. So from the date of conviction, it's as if you're in jail. But what is interesting is if the higher court reduces your sentence, then what will happen? From three years, they make it one year. So that five years will begin from one year or three years? You are disqualified for how many years? Five years from the date of expiry of the sentence. Sentence was three years. Now they reduce the sentence to one year. Your five years will begin from one year, end of one year or three years? One year from the reduced sentence. But if they, this is when they reduce the sentence. What if they remove the conviction like Salman Khan? Immediately it can be. Conviction is one part, sentence can keep on increasing, decreasing. When conviction only is removed, where is the sentence? Sentence will never come. Got it? So that is the next part. These are all the hidden points. Sorry? Yeah, correct, correct. It will be like that only. But still, conviction stands. Conviction stands. Why? I'll tell you. If Salman Khan was not that word is called acquittal. If he is no longer convicted, it is called acquittal. One more word is exoneration. All this they'll ask in the, I mean, they'll, they can use these words in the exam. We should be careful. Acquittal and exoneration means what? Initially proven guilty. Initially, but higher court has told that you are no longer guilty. Higher court, not high court. Any higher court has told you are no longer guilty. That is called acquittal. Salman Khan was acquitted. Salman Khan was exonerated. Sanjay Dutt was not acquitted. Sanjay Dutt is a convicted criminal with a lesser sentence. Ten years later, can Salman Khan start a company and become a director? Yes. Can Sanjay Dutt start and become a director? Yes. Can Sanjay Dutt 10 years later become a managing director? What do you think? Basically, reduced sentence, he came out. So, can he become a managing director? He can. Online friends, please answer guys. Can he become MD? Can he become a managing director? What do you think? So again, this is what, you know, you get in your integrated MCQs. They can mix like this and give anything they can give. So the MD disqualification is covered in 196.3. Again, don't worry about the section numbers. At the appropriate juncture, we will discuss. And see here the wordings here. At any time being convicted of a court and sentence for more than six months. Any time. Twenty years ago, if I have been convicted for more than six months, today, can I become a managing director? No. But can I be a director? Yes. Do you agree that every MD is an MD? Sorry, every MD is a D, director. Yes. So if I want to become, a, uh, want to appoint as an MD, I have to see two things. One is 164 and then 196.3. We will miss out 164 in the exam, write only 196.3 and come. Gone. Correct. They'll ask you, what are the appointment procedure for appointment of MD? We will not write 164 only. That's the problem. Every point will have a mark. These are some of the mistakes that we do in our exam. Yes. Right. So, five years from the date of expiry of the sentence. So, these are all keywords, guys. Convicted, offense, moral turpitude, otherwise, six months, five years. Six months and five years. Huh. But let's say under Subrata Roy of Sahara actually happened. Subrata Roy of Sahara did not pay the deposits on time. Did not pay the deposits on time. So he was convicted by the court 
for among other provisions of SEBI, also the provisions of Companies Act for not paying the this thing, not repaying the deposits and all those things, 74, 75, all these things. So under this section, all this, he was convicted and uh, jailed for, let's say, 2016 to 2023. In 2030, seven years later, he wants to become a uh, MD, that is not possible. Can he become a D? Can he become a D? Why? Yes, that's the proviso. Person has been convicted of any offence and sentenced in respect of imprisonment for a period of seven years or more. He shall not be eligible to be appointed as a director in any company. Permanent disqualification. Yes, if you are being appointed for the first time ever and directly as an MD, I should see both 164 and 196. In the exam also, if they ask you, you should write both. We generally miss out on 164, actually. We should not, right? So, permanent disqualification, guys, if he is convicted for 7 years or more. Unless they reduce the sentence, gone for him. They make it 8 years and then make it 6 years, okay, and become director. But if it's eight years and they make it seven years, gone. And that too in any company. So he can't even start a private company of his own, ruled out. An order disqualifying him, that's what they say. Got it? So this is about moral debate. So first one was simple, unsound mind. Second, under as insolvent, then application is pending. Next, convicted offense, moral tribute otherwise. Then, six months minimum. And because of that six months, five years get triggered. Five years will not come if six months is not there. Right? Very, very simple. And it's not less than six months. Other things are very simple. Quickly finish it off. Very, very simple actually. An order, an order is also, okay, what is the issue? Is it fine now? Just check it out. Yes, now check guys. Point number E. An order disqualifying him for appointment as a director has been passed by a court or tribunal and the order is in force. What is this? Order disqualifying him for appointment as a director. Okay, this is a normal order disqualifying the director. This could be due to fraud, misfeasance, breach of trust, mismanagement, any of these things. So, they can disqualify him by a court or a tribunal. Tribunal also under section 242, 244, oppression and mismanagement. Oppression and mismanagement, they can throw out a director. They can remove a director, they can disqualify a director. That is the example, right? That is by the tribunal and court. These are all simple points. He has not paid any calls in respect of any shares of the company held by him. That's anyway here. You can answer these things. This question, superbly they asked January 21. Summa had given here, I thought they will not ask only, they asked. 6 marks, January 21. One simple question, can a person has been disqualified by the order of the court eligible for compensation? They added this with MD provisions and gave. 
these are all some hidden points that I keep giving in my notes and they, I thought that they'll never ask these questions. I was thinking wrong. They have asked this. So this only required some four sections, you know, merger and answering. Jan 21, very, very recent. So in the, there they said operation and mismanagement, they threw him out. Can he be compensated? Now coming to that shares point here, shares point, moral turpitude otherwise we have already done guys and this thing also, 74.3 conviction was from 19 till 26, can you be a director in 31, same example, answer is no. This is while revising you can write it down, that is why I gave the like module 1 only. I am reading page number 42. Are you getting my point? Same it is. We have discussed everything. Moral turpitude means what? Otherwise means what? So while revising, you can just write it down. There is no wrong answer for this. Everything we have discussed. There is no set answer. You know in your own words, you can write. Does law punish body or mind? We have already discussed. Mens rea concept. Is conviction same as acquittal? Conviction means proven guilty. Acquittal means remove the guilt of. Is reduction of the sentence same as bail, furlough, parole? We have already seen the thing. Reduction of sentence is different. Bail, furlough, parole is like serving the sentence. Perfect. This 164-1E we have not done, so we will leave. Acquittal means not guilty anymore. You are removed from the guilt. Remove the guilt. Yes, opposite of conviction is acquittal. Ah, now coming to shares. He has not paid there only, page number 43. He has not paid calls in respect of shares. Question number one, which shares? Equity or preference? When nothing is given, litra legis, which shares? Equity or preference? Both. But articles can suggest Articles can suggest it is equity shares. Articles can suggest it is equity shares. Where you will get good coffee here? This is a famous place. Bangalore is known for coffee. It is, I am not kidding. But here also, Chennai actually is the land of coffee. That's why I am asking. Where do you get good filter coffee? No, no. If I have to go in the evening and all. Sangeeta is good. Okay. Then... Is there a place called Madras filter coffee or something? It's good da, or some... Oh, so all same quality. Where is the actual one? Which road? Mount Road. Okay, fine. One thing that I can't live without is coffee. That's why I'm asking. I don't like this uh, cappuccino and all that. That is not coffee in my opinion. Yes. So both equity and preference. Saravana Bhavan, that fellow died now. Didn't he die? That murderer. I don't think so. It, oh, Ila is telling superb. I didn't like the coffee there actually. It's good, huh? Okay. Madras Coffee House. Correct, correct. Okay. Ah, which company? Which company, guys? Okay, this is one interesting thing. See, in X Limited and Y Limited. X Limited and Y Limited. Both, I mean, in this he has paid the call. Here he has not paid the call. He is disqualified in Y or in X or both? He is proposed to be a director in both X Limited and Y Limited. He is a shareholder in both X Limited and Y Limited. In X Limited, he has paid the call money. Y Limited has not paid the call money. Disqualification will be in X Limited or Y Limited or both? Why? Only Y Limited. Why? Yes, held by him whether alone or jointly in respect of shares, six months has elapsed. And here it's not there. If you see the bear act, where? If you see, he has not paid any calls in respect of any shares of, yes, the company. Not a company. The company. Your entire law is this only. Uh, the, that's all. The company. The company means the company which has not paid the, in which is not paid the calls. So, 
Saravana Bhavan. That fellow is on murderer, no? He was jailed. Didn't you know that? He has committed murder. He married twice. Second wife's husband, Damar, hero. So then he was jailed. Then he died in jail. What's the point of owning so much property and money when you have to die in jail? Ah, staff only. Well, acquisition. And then knocked off the husband. Crazy guy. Seriously. Incredible man. Yes, so if you see, that's the thing. And a person who has been, okay, not here. Sorry, sorry. Shares, no? Yeah, yeah, this one. Which company? Of course, which company? It says the company. Not a company. So in my example, it is Y Limited. Company in which they have not paid the, in which he has not paid the call money. Mind you, he is a shareholder, guys. He is a shareholder and he is proposed to be a director. Shareholder is proposed to be a director. Now, I am not insolvent and all. I have a lot of money. But why? I mean, six months has elapsed. Time I have given. The last date fixed for the payment of the call. Why do you think this provision is there? See, moral conviction, you can self-explanatory. Insolvent. Insolvent also, why is that provision there? I am an extremely brilliant director. But I don't have money. Why is that provision there? Yes, when you can't handle your money, what you will handle other people's money? Correct. Here, Ulta, I have money. But call money I have not paid, so they have not uh, qualifying me. Why? Why do you think? Huh. Here, it's like, I'll tell you, uh, come, please join this company, invest, I'll ask you, shareholders. You will say, okay, sir, how much you have put? So, first question that they'll ask. No, sir, I have not put anything, but you put. No. How much money you have pumped in, you tell first. When he has only not pumped in money, six months are also over. Which means you are not interested in the company. But you still want to be the director. Right? That's the reason why they have given once you become a director, you have to hold something called as qualification shares. Does this section cover qualification shares? No, because qualification shares will come after you become a director. No, this qualification is always at the point of becoming a director. So, qualification shares are not covered. Reasoning, because it has to be done. I mean, qualification shares have to be obtained after becoming a director. Qualification shares have to be obtained after becoming a director. Company, yes, only that particular company. Interpretation of statute used here is litra legis, literal construction. Qualification shares, there was a section in the old law which said that once you become a director, you should hold some shares to qualify to be a director. That concept has been removed now. But articles still say, once you become a director, you should hold at least one share. Earlier, it was a point. You are a director, pump in your own money. Now, there is no need. The New Companies Act, that is New Means 2013 Companies Act, is, that section only is not there. If I am not wrong, it was some 285 or uh, 272, old, old law, 1956. Section is removed. But still, articles of the company still have that dialogue. For a director, you should obtain only at least one share. That's the reason. Arjun got it now. Qualification shares is... Qualification shares means what? It is the share that you need to buy when you are a... After you become a director, to qualify to continue to be a director. That concept is no longer there. That's what I meant. Now it is not covered anymore in the Companies Act. Two more points and we'll take a break. Then you can go have coffee, tea, whatever.
two, two more points. This is any doubt? Yeah. Yes, same. Preference share, equity shares, both. If he has not paid any of either of the two, it will apply. Unless the article specifically prescribe only equity. Here it is not about uh, you not holding shares or holding shares. Here it's about your negligence to pay. Call, they have called. Six months you have not bothered. So basically it means you are really uninterested in the company. So that uninterest and negligence, I am going to... What do you say? Disqualify you. Next. He has been convicted of the offense involving related party transactions under 188. This will be dealt with in cluster 3. But interesting to note, related party transaction is only about non-compliance. First of all, you should be a related party. Then... It should be a related party transaction that is called a specified transaction. It should be beyond arm's length price. If you do that, we will see that in cluster 3 properly. I am just giving you a gist of it. Cluster 3 talks about, first of all, it should be a related party. Second, it should be a specified transaction. Third, it should be beyond arm's length price, ALP. If it happens, then... For non-compliance, there will be some provisions. This word has been written wrongly here, convicted. You can never be convicted actually. Very, very difficult to convict you under related party transactions. Conviction is by a criminal court. In 188, there is nothing criminal about it. It's either you follow or you don't follow. If you don't follow, you pay fine. So that word is wrongly used. So this clause will practically never apply. In exam, they'll still ask. You can write convicted. That can give an answer to this particular question. Where did it go? Ah, here. Can a person be convicted? Page number 42. No. Just for your knowledge. You cannot convict a person under 180. It's not some criminal, it's not a criminal offense. It's a civil. It's for non-compliance. Nothing criminal about it. Forty-two. See, I could remove, I could have given you a fast track material, but I purposely didn't want to do it. Good, you should have the regular material only. All this will you will revise properly. And quick, quickly, or fin quickly, or finishing everything. So no tension. Should be fast, apt. Ah, well, drafting error. He will have to pay the penal provisions and other things in 188, but he will not be. He cannot be convicted. Yeah, in related party transactions, practically disqualifications cannot happen. But in exam, it can happen. In exam, just stick to, I mean, in, what I am saying is, exam also, yeah, good question. I will show you a paper. Now that you ask me, I will just link it to that paper quickly. Have they asked all those things? Have they asked all those things? Yes. Will they be asking? Yeah, I think uh, November... Is that paper? I just remember which paper is that. One paper they asked, guys. Let me see. November 19 or November 18. Can't even search for May 20 paper. Correct. Not there only. May 19, let's search. That question was anyway asked. Ah, this only. I'll just, let's not go into the full question. This was May 19, new syllabus. Right? So in this case, 
they have given in the question that uh, there is contravention of 188 contravention of 188 and see actual question they have asked come on comment upon the uh, is there any contravention if we state the liability of the wrongdoer then the next question comment upon the appointment of Sudhir in another company Raga Limited basically they are asking is he qualified or disqualified in some other company what is the answer he is qualified why because it's just contravened he was not convicted to that extent they are asking in the exam this was May 2019 second question six marks so that's why we have to do it very much in depth examination question see same thing comment upon the appointment of Sudhir as a director in Raga Limited of course this will be like two marks whatever but yeah comment means you have to explain generally we will only mug up thinking oh 188 188 188 disqualification so I will say disqualified that's what it is generally we will never read the word convicted since they have only given here because conviction is not possible only in that section so they will give it like this only in the exam related by transaction and in contravention of 188 contravention means he has broken that 188 he is violated 188 doesn't mean he has been proven guilty by a criminal court under 188 which is never possible the only section that is possible is fraud correct and everything is again linked to section 212 sorry proven guilty by court of criminal court especially criminal court if they give convicted then yes but what i'm saying is practically it's not possible but in the exam if they give convicted then say oh he's convicted okay fine if you feel it's convicted uh, you tell uh, if you feel it's convicted convicted but that word should be there that word is not there and the word is not there answer remains he can definitely be appointed in some other company because he is not disqualified because he is not convicted two marks but when we mug up from some textbook we will only see 188 we will never see the word convicted that's the problem but the crash course is to highlight where we were going wrong and to ensure that all those things will be rectified in law that's the beauty you write everything and come outside you will tell macha superb very easy paper 74.5 i have calculated i'll get divide by 2 divide by 3 final result so that's the problem because of these small small mistakes for this you would have written it is possible and come i mean sorry disqualified because you only see 188 but the 188 the wordings used are something different altogether convicted right so you can say refer may 19 new syllabus question paper 1b 1b anyway in the second material i have given the question paper guys second i have given the question paper second module has the question paper you can check it may 2019 new syllabus 1b six mark question in that this will be around two marks maybe they are asking all this now next he has not complied with 152.3 din duplicate din he has not applied for din properly he has two three dins allotted to him he has not given uh, actual details is not submitting his DIN properly. Anything DIN related provisions means he is disqualified. Next, there are minimum number of directors, minimum number of directorships that a director can have. In the old Companies Act, it was 15 public companies. You could have had any number of private companies. So our Sri Vijay Malya was, I call him Sri because because of him so many laws have changed. Respect you have to give. So he had 47 private companies directorship. Right? So when you have 47 private companies where your money is there and when you have 15 public companies where public money is there, which one will you concentrate? 
your money obviously so that guy did not concentrate on this company and look what happened to kingfisher anyway after that asco they said nothing is doing let let nothing doing let us change the law so now they made 165 20 companies overall of which 10 will be public 10 can be public rather so now tell me if i contravene this what will happen people were still not following this they were still going on and contravening left right center they sent so many notices still nothing doing that's why they inserted this in the companies amendment act the only way to ensure compliance is to disqualify them they said if you don't fall in line i'm going to deactivate the din you do whatever you want the moment you join the 21st company automatic din deactivation very good provision this is section 165 not complied with the provisions of subsection 1 of section 165 sorry yeah 11 public company also yes 11 public company or overall 20 yes madam tell me Yeah, yeah, yeah. Companies act only. There are two forty one to forty all operation mismanagement, all these things, and uh, that is one part of it. Then what about this then? Ah, that that's what I'm linking here. Right? Already there is a question here, no? Here, where did it go? Ha, ah, here. Can one forty one e order? be considered as otherwise in 164 1d what do you think that is what she is asking 164 1e order by the tribunal is there is that the same as otherwise in 164 1d moral turpitude or otherwise what do you think if you see in 164 1d talks about conviction here it is just an order both are different conviction as i told you should be by a criminal court so 164 1e is not 164 1d best example for this is chanda kochar icici i'll explain that case later uh when we do 199 in cluster number 5 100% so that time you will see that chanda kochar was thrown out was uh, initiated the enforcement directorate under pmla launched the investigation and then it went to sfio here and sfio then uh, the under company law they said that okay until pending enquiry everything you will now be disqualified and the bank icici bank only threw her out now that was an order under 164 1e she is still not convicted that case will go on for years correct so that's the thing sorry order enforcement they'll give the time you will be disqualified for next 3 years that is order is in force right done so with that we have successfully completed one subsection that's all so you will calculate now One day, one subsection. Ten days, ten subsections. What fast track is this? All right, don't worry. I told you first day will be like that only because I am getting you used to my style. Maybe you have not, you are not used to this style. So I am getting you used to it. That's it. Once you are already, uh, you know, there, then no tension. Rangesh will discuss that compensation question later, man. That is cluster number five. So we'll discuss that later. so this is what it is guys so that's what you need to understand that this fast track is such a way that first day will always be little slow where you, i am you are getting used to me and my style once that is done then aram se we can go and this is actually heavy duty section going forward it will be easy 
So after the break, one more more heavy duty section. Sorry, subsection 164 2. Let's take a break, maybe 10 minutes, 10 15 minutes, whatever you want. Quickly go have coffee or whatever you are drinking and come. Yes. Online people, you anyway are drinking, so no tension. Yeah, let's take a break. 